Welcome to Back Care Month at Experiential Anatomy. I'm Lizzie Lassiter, and joining us is Judith Hansen Lassiter. Hi, Mama. Hi, Lizzie. I want to talk today about sacroiliac pain, sometimes called SI pain. One question, for example, is sometimes it wanders. Uh, you know, you can have it on the left, and then you can have it on the right a di- in a different month or a different episode. Talk to us just. Give us a basic understanding of the structure of this joint and a little bit about why that, you know, what kind of pain can happen there. Okay, we need pictures. Okay, let me share my screen with you. Back in anatomy. All right. So we are now looking at a close-up of the sacroiliac joint. You have two on the left and right, and it's where the sacrum joins the ilium. So it's where the spinal column translates weight right there. And there's two, obviously. Translates weight from the column into the pelvis and into the legs. So it's a transfer junction. And there's a little bit of give in that joint. But let's look at it from the back. I love pocket anatomy. I just think this is such a great learning tool so we can exactly see what you're talking about. We'll turn it a little bit more. That's perfect. And you can see right where the ilium, where the sacrum kind of wedges down so that when we stand up, if we stand with normal curves, the sacrum is wedging down into the pelvis, which adds to the stability of the joint because it's a joint of stability not mobility. So what sacroiliac pain, that's great on the photos, on the picture. Let me just give for people who are a little bit slower, because we want people to be able to join from zero in our experiential anatomy webinar course. This is the sacrum and this is the ilium. Yes. I like to call this sacred bone. <laughs> and I, I have a theory based on nothing that the reason children likes Uh, slides is because when they were born they slid down the sacrum there was their first impression of coming into the world was coming out a slide and they that's why they love slides so how does sacroiliac pain often present Uh, usually over the over the area Um, the most common thing is a pain about about as big as a US quarter you know about that big and uh, sometimes lately, well, sometimes it's, it's can be on the outside of the hip mm-hmm. or down the outside of the thigh from the hip toward the knee, not, not the back. That could be something else, sciatica, but down the side. But here's, here's the thing. I mean, usually it's, it stays on one side, but sometimes it can, it can change. And part of it for women is hormonal changes. And, mm-hmm. stru- other, and structural changes, other, ch- other reasons like ch- structural changes. But the thing about pain is it's a very inaccurate, uh, dis- it's very inaccurate to diagnose cause. So mm-hmm. in other words, people having a heart attack can have pain in their throat or their arm and not in their chest. So you can't always tell until you actually have um, a physical therapist or an osteopath or physiatrist or someone test you and give you some motion tests. How is the body moving or not moving? Where is it stuck? Like a dresser drawer, a little stuck that they can tell, well, it's on the left. And you might say, well, my pain's on the right. Mm -hmm. Because of course, if you move, if you, this is your ilium and you move one, if you move it, it's, it's, it's not just one moves without affecting everything else. And this is one of the things we really want to focus on in our class on the back is that it's never just about L4, L5, lower lumbar right. vertebra. It's about the whole column. And it's never just about the whole column. It's also how does it articulate with the pelvis and how that affects the knees. And everything is so connected. So sacroiliac pain is generally created mostly by iliosacral dysfunction. In other words, the big bone of the ilium has moved slightly and it's not in its good stable position rather than the sacrum itself because there's so many big muscles that attach to that bone and it can can so easy for it to go out, especially in yoga because of the way we teach twists. 
which I want to talk about in our lower back course. What are we doing in twist to feed sacroiliac dysfunction? Mm -hmm. So good. Okay. Here's the website for everyone. Experientialanatomy.yoga. That's where you're going to go to stay in the loop. Give us your email and we're going to let you know when our back care webinar course launches. Mom, tell us one last thing. Tell us one thing we're going to learn about the sacroiliac joint and yoga in the course without telling us the thing. Give us a teaser of something we're going to learn in the course. I want to teach you how to do practice, asana practice, without causing sacroiliac dysfunction. So good. Simple, easy understanding of what to do and what to teach so you never get it again. And what's so great about your teaching and Mary, the way that we design these courses is it's all embodied learning. So we, I'm always on my mat. You're going to have your mat when you're joining us in the course and you're going to actually feel it in your bodies, which as yoga teachers is such a great way for us to be able to remember it and apply it when we're standing in front of a room full of people helping them and teaching them. I think it's the only way. If I feel it, if I've experienced it, then I can share that hmm. because understanding is not sufficient. Experience and embodiment is the most important thing. Namaste, Mama. Namaste. Thank you so much. Tell us where we can find you on the internet. Judith.yoga. Okay, and I'm lizzielasseter.com and on Facebook and Instagram. Bye for now. <laughs> Bye.